Hey guys, it's Declan, and in today's video, I'm going to be uploading something a little different as to what I've uploaded in the past. I'm going to be uploading my GCSE performance exam, um, which I got the grade for on Result Day in August. I got a B for um, my drama exam in overall, but for the exam itself, we were only awarded a C, and this came as a shock to both my teacher and my group, and we felt this was really unfair. Um, because of the amount of work we put into it and the techniques that we used because it was stated by the exam board that these sort of techniques were what they sought for and the um, elements that we included was what um, the examiners wanted and it came back and we got the low C and we were really disappointed so I decided that I would upload the exam today for you guys to watch and basically I just want you to Give me your honest opinions on it and give me um, an honest grade in which you think the exam should have got um, because, I mean, we were really disappointed with a C and we just felt that it deserved a little bit more accreditation than a C. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, do let me know what you think in the comments below and yeah. performing an adaptation of Adult Child Dead Child by Claire Dowling. Them. I can't win for losing. My mother despaired of me. I despaired of me. My sister was an angel. Never put her foot wrong. Always clean, always tidy. A perfect child, a joy to behold. A squeaky clean, whole floor. Muddy shoes tramped from school. My mother's anger, my mother's annoyance. I would have walked on the ceiling if I could, like Spider-Man. But I guess the ceiling was squeaky clean too. My father was an actor, a professional pretender. Pretended to be a father. Pretended to have feelings. Pretended enthusiasm. Demanded perfection. Demanded perfection. 100%. Do it right. Do it the best. Be brainy. Be sporty. Be talented. Be good. Well mannered. Polite. You know it all. Do it all. 100%. Do it right. Do it the best. The cupboard. The cupboard under the stairs. Dark. Silent. Clock. I was never what you call an abuse child. Nothing to do. Nothing to say. Nothing to be but lifeless. Not by any stretch of the imagination. Invisible. Nowhere. Nothing. I was just sitting in the cupboard till I... Let's say it yourself and show some respect! I wasn't abused. Not what you call an abuse child. Not abused. Everything I got I deserved. Except the cupboard. The cupboard under the stairs. I never locked anyone in the cupboard. But my parents did. I remember when we moved. I was about eight. And my sister and I, we went to stay with friends with my parents for a week. Probably while we got the moving sorted out. The friends of my parents had a son called Andrew. Who was, I think, a couple of years older than me. And when nobody was around, he'd punch and pinch me. His parents wouldn't believe me. Before we moved, I asked my mum where London was. She said... It was a hundred miles away. <coughs> I 
was very worried about staying with these friends of my parents and Andrew. A hundred miles is a long way to run when you just ate. I remember being very relieved to find out that there wasn't a cupboard under the stairs in our new flat in London. Warm, home, safe. Then I found out there was a broom cupboard which was much smaller. Dark, silent, claustrophobic. Jaunting again, scallywag. I passed my next door neighbours, the Bannermans. They'd been talking to my lady, and as I passed, I overheard Mr. Bannerman say, She's a stupid old cow, isn't she? Well, I was angry. I was angry. I was so upset and too confused to look her in the eye and say hello. Just so angry. What he said. How could he say that about my lady? About my lovely lady? Just had to run. Just had to run and sit in my place. And I sat in my place. And my invisible friend sat in my place. And we fumed about the Bannermans. And my invisible friend said, Something's, Something's got, got to be done. done. I agreed, but I didn't know what. So we sat in silence for a while until my invisible friend decided that... If they were going down the road... Which they were. It must mean that they're going out. And if they're going out... Which they must have been. Then that means that they're not in. And if they're not in, which they weren't, then we should put a brick through their window. And since I can't because I'm invisible, which she was, then you'll have to do it. Which I didn't want to do because it was wrong and I was scared. This is when me and my invisible friend started arguing and she decided that if I didn't throw a brick through the bandman's window, she was going to go away and never speak to me again. I didn't realise what was happening. What was beginning, what would have happened later on. But that was the starting point. That's when I began to lose control. So finally, I had to agree. And finally, I did put a brick through the vandal's window. After making sure first that my father was still out, my mother was engrossed in the Hoover. Stop it, Benji! Stop! I don't want to do it, Benji! Stop! I threw a brick through the vandal's window. So. After all was said and done, my invisible friend was truly a monster, a horror, and a terror. And I called her, Benji! Come on, Benji! Table for four, please. Uh, five! Four. My parents had always known about my, about my invisible friend. She sat next to me at the dinner table, and she didn't like cabbage either. Occasionally, through me, she'd ask them a question. They'd answer, Mum? Mum? Mum! What? Benji doesn't like cabbage. Shut up! We're in public! By the time I was eight, they were telling me I was too old for imaginary friends. Stupid. Embarrassment. <sighs> Mum! 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 Not now! Benji says she's not putting that fucking filth in her mouth! I said Benji doesn't like cabbage! You just broke. 
broke that picture. What? You just broke it. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. I saw you. No, it was an accident. No, it wasn't. I saw you. It was an accident. You picked it up and threw it on the floor. No, I didn't. I just saw you. It was an accident. I saw you. Benji did it. Oh, don't be so stupid. She did. Will you stop it with that Benji stuff? It was you! No, it was Benji! No, it was you! Now just stop it! You too old for all that rubbish! Well, she, she did. did. So slowly, a little bit at a time, a little more each day, moving further and further away, making it more difficult to connect with each other, making it more difficult to try. They were far away over on that side. Parents, <coughs> sister, teachers, everybody. Benji and I were on this side. My lady, I could still reach, still connect with. She was in the middle, but then she left. Further and further away. Miles apart, and no bridges. Just me and Benji in our own little world. The only time when our worlds collided was when Benji did something wrong, and I got the blame for it. I had to see a child psychologist at school. What an idiot. Ahem. So, tell me about this Benji. Uh, she was wild and uncontrollable. <laughs> she scared me! So, what was it like at school? Mr Kent, he was a woodwork teacher. Oh, and a bastard. By now I was 13 and hated by everybody, including Mr Kent. It had been about a year since my lady had left and I'd been on and off at war with Benji since then. I was at war with Benji and everyone else was at war with me. I was making a toe strike in woodwork. Mr. Kent said I was an idiot. I was proud of my toast rack. Mr. Kent said it was crap. Mr. Kent said that I was useless. Mr. Kent said I was a worthless specimen of a human being. Mr. Kent went on and on and on till Benji jumped out and threw a hand at him. long night. It was black and then it was dawn. All night. A long night. I am awake or sort of awake or something. I'm not sure. Benji doesn't stop talking, doesn't stop telling me that my dad's going to kill me when he finds out. All night and I can't sleep. I don't know what's happening to me. I can't seem to sort anything out. I can't seem to understand anything and Benji keeps telling me. Remember the ashtray? The ashtray. You threw it at him. Remember? It didn't hit him, did it? It didn't hit him. But he was going to hit you. You could tell. Ah, yes. You could tell. He was going to hit you with the ashtray. She stopped him. Remember? She stopped him. She said, DON'T! But he was going to hit you with the ashtray. And he would have done if she hadn't stopped him. Now look what you've done. Think about it. What's he going to do? Think about it. Leave me alone. Shut up. I can't think. He's going to kill you when he finds out. That's what he's going to do. He's going to kill you. Unless you kill him first. Unless you do it first. To save yourself. To defend yourself. You've got to find the hammer before he finds out. You've got to find the hammer. All night. It was a long night, and I don't know, I don't know what's happening to me, I can't seem to sort anything out, and Benji won't shut up, I do remember the ashtray, I do remember that she stopped him, but suddenly it's black, and then it's dawn, and I'm standing there, in the bedroom with the hammer, and I don't know how, I don't know how, but I hit him, I hit him! I don't know what's happening to me. I don't know what's happening to me. But then he wakes up. He wakes up. I remember when we went travelling. Benji took me travelling. I don't know where we went. Just went travelling. For miles and miles. With no recollection where we were going. Just went travelling. Until the police picked me up. Fly. Don't go with the fly. I said, 
was mad. Totally out of hand. I was under virtual house arrest at the ward. The guards, they decided to keep an eye on me. But I think they were scared of me. I don't blame them really, I was pretty loopy at that time. But if anything's guaranteed to drive you mad, it's having the guards! Turn around the place, glancing side at you all the time, locking your bedroom door at night, not saying anything about anything and pretending nothing's happened. I should have talked about it. Somebody should have said something, done something. I feel terrible about it. I didn't know what to do, how to apologise. Nothing happened, nobody said a word. They just watched me, kept me in the ward, and locked my bedroom door at night. What could I do? How could I explain? It was mad. It was driving me mad. And Benji! Uh, I had to put up with Benji! I could feel her bubbling under me all the time with all the tension. She couldn't bear it. I couldn't bear it. With the guards tiptoeing around me, not knowing what to do with me, being scared of me, and my dad sitting there with a big purple bruise on his head as if nothing had happened. We couldn't go on like that. Somebody had to do something. Do something before Benji did. So I did. I did something. Did what they wanted to do. Did what my dad should have done. You know, get it over with. Clear the air. So, eye for eye, tooth for tooth. I hit myself with the hammer. Ah! So first you hammered that woodwork teacher. And then it was your father. And then you hammered yourself. Me? A hammer murderer? I wanted to explain that it didn't happen how it sounded, like was some sort of hammer murderer on the rampage. I wanted to explain that it didn't happen like that. And then she said, so why did you choose the hammer? I had to say over and over, I didn't choose the hammer. I never chose the hammer. It wasn't that I chose the hammer, but I did. Mental hospitals aren't that bad. Quite nice, really. I was there for six weeks, and they gave me some drugs to calm me down. And I did calm down. And then you calmed down. I felt a lot better. Everybody was very nice and friendly. All the staff, doctors, nurses. They all said I could talk to them if I ever had a problem. But I kept quiet and got calmer and got a grip of myself and Benji. I felt a lot better. In the mental hospital, you become aware of the lack of love. You get this feeling that's inside you, but you can't explain it. And the feeling hurts. After a year, I got released. It was the same as the mental hospital back home because you become aware of the adult power and the anger grows and the wall gets stronger because frustration comes. Enough was enough. I had to move out. I know now that I'm too old for imaginary friends. I know that now. So I got a flat. I felt I was ready. Too old for imaginary friends. I hadn't needed Benji. I hadn't even thought about Benji. But I was lonely in my flat. I'd never been on my own before. I'd always had Benji. I'd never been on my own. And it was just at that point when I thought, I can't do it. I can't cope. I'll just have to go back to the hospital or something. It was just at that point that I had this brilliant idea. I thought, why not get a dog? And I did. I simply got a dog. And it's been the best thing I've ever done because she makes me happy. And it's funny because Ever since I've had her, I get this feeling like I'm close to my lady again. Not physically or anything. I don't mean that. Because I don't know where she is. I don't even know her name. I couldn't look her up. But I mean in spirit or something. Like we connect again. Like she's near me. With me. And she's a great dog. Nothing perfect though. Thank God. Just a scruffy mongrel type. Always into things. A real scallywag. And we do everything together, always together, just like Benji was. I do sometimes have this urge, though, to stop taking the medication. Not forever, just for a little while, just to see how they get on. Because Benji always loved dogs, too, ever since we met my lady and her dog, Benji. In fact, Benji was dead proud to be called after Benji the dog. But I can't. I mustn't even think about it. I mustn't think about the past. Or Benji, or anything. I should just concentrate on my dog. Well, I do concentrate on my dog, in fact. I do, because she makes me happy. She's a real scallywag, always into everything, messing up the flat with her dog hairs. I can't keep the place clean, I can't. She's a real monster, and a horror, and a terror, and I call her Lady!
Thanks for watching today's video guys, I hope you enjoyed it, I know it was different but um, it kind of needed to be done, um, just to express um, our disappointment at the grade we got for this exam and our annoyance towards the exam board for marking the whole country down and only accrediting private schools with A's and A stars and below and um, accrediting state schools with B's and below. I mean, I did get my group and I did get one of the highest grades that um, students got within my area. So, um, to say that we achieved that, I mean, that's a pretty, pretty good achievement. And to say that we achieved one of the best grades that a state school could have got this year, then um, I think that's another great achievement as well. But we just felt as though the exam itself shouldn't have been graded a C. Um, so yeah, if you did enjoy this guys, make sure you give it a thumbs up, comment and subscribe if you're new. Um, I try to post every Sunday, I'm just coming back from a really long break and in the next few weeks I shall have um, my London video up. Uh, I didn't really film or take many pictures that day but um, I'm going to try and edit whatever I got into a little video for you all. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.